I'm going to introduce our uh, speaker, Craig Haynes, who's been engaged with worldwide operations for Exxon Mobil Corporation since February of 1989. Throughout his career, he's held positions in areas of oil and gas field operations and maintenance, project management, reservoir facilities, and drilling engineer in engineering, as well as strategic planning. In January of 07, Mr. Hames was appointed the Alaska Production Manager for Exxon Mobil, and prior to this assignment, he worked in Canada for over four years. In his Alaska position, Craig has been accountable for the safe and reliable operations of the Alaska assets. He has been directly involved in community, regulatory, and governmental affairs, and specifically, he's overseen Prudhoe Bay, Kaparik, Duck Island, and Granite Point performance with the owners and the progression of the Point Thompson project. Um, sorry to report Craig is going to be leaving next month for an assignment in Australia, um, but we've been grateful to have you here, Craig, and uh, look forward to what you have to say. Please help me welcome Craig Haynes. Thanks, Rick. It's a pleasure to be here today, and thanks, everybody, for coming. These breakfasts are fantastic opportunities for all of us to talk about different opportunities and projects happening in Alaska, and I want to thank the RDC for allowing ExxonMobil to talk today. We've been in the state for over 50 years and uh, this year we're increasing our spending by over 10 percent and we'll spend in this state over a billion dollars this year. So we're ramping up our activities on many projects. Point Thompson's one project I want to talk about today and we've given you each a, a brochure here today which gives you a bit of perspective of ExxonMobil in Alaska over the last 50 years and what we're looking towards for the future in Alaska. Point Thompson's an exciting project. It's a fantastic opportunity to give you an update today. We've been very busy, particularly over the last nine months. There's been a lot of activity happening up on the, the North Slope and across multiple fabrication shops. And uh, hopefully I can give you a, a little bit of a perspective of some of that activity uh, today. Many of you uh, probably know where Point Thompson is, but in case you don't, it's uh, way over here on the right-hand side of this map. It's about 60 miles uh, east of Prudhoe Bay, way over here, about 66 miles west of Kaktobi, which is a village in Anwar itself. So it's the midway station between uh, Kaktobi and Barrow, if you like. And um, the reservoir itself is uh, about uh, 100,000 acres. It's 12,000 feet beneath the ocean. Half of it is under the land, half of it is under the ocean. And we will use uh, leading edge technology to develop this field from the land. There'll be no drilling in the ocean. We will, uh, there's no roads to Point Thompson. Uh, the only way to get there is you can barge in summer for about six to seven weeks. You can build an ice road, which we've just done, and I'll show you some fantastic photos of that in winter. Or you can fly by helicopter. <coughs> And obviously there's time to travel through uh, certain periods of the, the year as well. So we're pretty much a remote area. It's an environmentally sensitive area. So what we're doing here is a project that minimizes our environmental footprint. And uh, again, it's another example, as Jason talked about, of where we can work together with the environment and put in a, a sustainable development. We've been busy on Point Thompson project for a couple of years now since uh, back in 2007, had a lot of activity over the last 18 months. And in the last year, we've spent over $150 million in the state on this project. And uh, we've had uh, over 350 to 400 people working through some of the peak activities in winter. Right now, we have over 300 people working on this project. <coughs> and most of that is up on the site. We've uh, tripled the size of our office here in Anchorage, and we're leasing additional floor space been ordering a lot of furniture as we continue to ramp up, so we've got a lot of people coming into the state. And obviously we've leveraged significant expertise of the contracting community. As I looked yesterday at the count, we have 147 Alaskan contractors working with us on this project. Every day I look, that number increases. And I have a list here, and if your name's not on the list, I, I guess it's just a matter of time before we find you, or you find us. Um, We've also been very busy doing design work. We're doing that uh, through the conceptual engineering phase. We're about to move into the front end engineering design phase. I'll show you a couple of pictures of some of the design work we've done. And we're on track, on schedule to production by 2014. 
Um, this is a uh, five and a half year project from today. It's about a seven and a half year in total. And uh, the critical path will be getting the permits. We need over 50 permits from federal, state and, re and local agencies and it will take two and a half years to get those 50 permits. So it's a massive undertaking. To drill this first well, we've had fantastic uh, teamwork and cooperation from the state agencies, the DNR, the AOGCC, the North Slope Borough, and we had to get 42 permits to drill the first well. And that took us months and months. So there's a lot of activity on the permitting front, and we need help from everybody who's experts at doing that. This is almost like a disclaimer statement, because this, so this is the list of contractors that we're... And there's two pages. That's page one, and I apologise <coughs> if you can't read it. But they're, they're all Alaskan companies, and then there's page two. Uh, we used to be able to fit it on one page, but as I said, it, it continues to grow. So great news. We, uh, we did a lot of work in Sokolin. Uh, we've got a major development over there. We spent $500 million with Alaskan companies to help us develop Sokolin. We came over to Alaska to grab that expertise in Arctic development and took it over to Sokolin, and now we're going to grab that same expertise and use it here at Point Thompson. This is a picture of what the site will look like where the central production facilities will be located by 2014. And this is a, uh, to put this in perspective, that is the drill rig, that little piece there. And I'll show you the drill rig, but that drill rig is uh, 170 feet tall, 25% taller than the Statue of Liberty. So that gives you a perspective of the size of this facility. Um, this is a central processing facility. We'll be able to handle 200 million cubic feet per day of gas, which will come from one well at Point Thompson. These are world-class production wells. That gas will be cycled and re-injected back into the reservoir. And we'll, we'll extract 10,000 barrels a day of condensate from that gas. Condensate is like a kerosene or a light cooking oil. That will be sent via an export pipeline to the existing taps line, and then we'll re-inject the gas back into the reservoir and conserve that resource for when, and I say when, there is a gas pipeline. And then we will build a gas pipeline and export the gas at a later phase. We're also setting up these facilities to handle oil production. We're drilling some oil wells to test some heavy oil, and if that oil is successful, we'll tie that in and produce that as well. We're putting in uh, camp facilities, an export pipeline. We're sizing it for 70,000 barrels a day. That's for the ultimate development. So we put in one oil pipeline once for the oil and the condensate. And this is just the first phase. This is just the first project at Point Thompson. There are more to come. Um, and this project will be well over one and a half uh, billion dollars to get this going just for the first phase. When Thompson is high pressure, the reservoir pressure is 10,200 pounds per square inch. If you take two Dodge trucks, that's about 11,000 pounds. If you put that on the tip of your thumb, that's 11,000 pounds per square inch. That's the pressure in this reservoir. At this depth, that's twice what you would normally see. When we bring this onto production, it will be the highest pressure gas cycling facility in the world. There's nothing like it. And when we drill these wells, we'll break, break uh, world records. So we've got a lot of drillers excited. We've brought in drillers from Sockland, where we hold the world record for the longest reach wells. We've brought in expertise from Canada, and we've brought in expertise from deep water. And we've brought in expertise for high pressure, high temperature. The temperature down here in the reservoir is 230 degrees Fahrenheit, and that pressure, 11,200 pounds per square inch. And we're drilling not only into the land, down under the land, but we've got to drill out under the ocean to tap into the reservoir. So what that means is the drillers have to use the densest drilling mud in the world, 16 pounds per gallon. A jug of water is about 7 pounds per gallon. So a jug of mud is about 16 pounds per gallon. And that mud has to flow to lubricate the well, get the drilling cuttings out, and hold the pressure back so it doesn't collapse as you drill. So the drillers have got lots of uh, challenges there in getting that calculation and the density of that mud right. This picture on the right-hand side is a wellhead that we would have to put on the Point Thompson well for an injection well. These gentlemen, I think I've told you before, but these gentlemen are about 10 foot tall. 